So you've just come back from a fantastic shoot. You've got some amazing pictures all on your little CF card, your SD card, or whatever it is that you're capturing on. But what's the next process? What's the next stage? What, what, what do you then do with these raw images? Well, what I normally do is I take this card and I give it to my assistant and that's my workflow. The question is, once I give it to them, what do they do with it, okay? Is it some crazy magical thing that occurs? Uh, in some ways it actually is. Um, Capture One's such a powerful tool that what you can do with the images, the raw images, is actually quite extraordinary. So let me now take you through, step by step, the exact process that we use. Is this a perfect process? Is this a perfect workflow? I don't know, but it's the workflow that we use and it definitely works for us and maybe it'll work for you as well. So let's take these pictures and let's have a look at the workflow from capture to completion. So here we are back in the office. We've got our raw data on the cards and what do we do with that? Also, just to note, the workflow I'm about to show you is exactly the same workflow that we use when we're on location. Okay, The only difference is we're ingesting at that point into a laptop but now we're gonna be ingesting into uh, a Mac tower instead, but everything is relatively the same and where it does vary, I will let you know. Okay, um, so let's start with, the first thing we need to do is open Capture One. So we've just opened up Capture One and the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new session. So we're gonna go here to File and New Session. So we're gonna be doing a reverse date order. So we're gonna go year, month and day. And so we're gonna have 2013, it's the 10th month because it's October, the the 10th month and 08 for the 8th day of October. So that's the first bit that we have. Now, why do we do that? Because what it means is everything that was shot in 2013, we can locate relatively quickly and easily. And then we can go down into the month and then into the day in a, in a very simple uh, system. 2013, 10, 08, underscore, Michelle Dries. I'm calling my session the date and then underscore and then Michelle Dries. Now who's Michelle Dries? Well Michelle Dries is an absolutely fantastic drummer that we had the pleasure of photographing very recently and I'm going to use the pictures, well a few of the pictures from that particular shoot to illustrate my workflow. And you can see here we've got location. Now that's a rather important thing. Now, because we're here in the office, uh, we actually have a dedicated RAID drive for all of our image files. So that's where we'll actually locate this particular session. It'll be in the RAID drive. Okay, so let's do that now. So, location. And just wait for everything to wake up. Image files, RAID is what I'm selecting. I've got a number of choices down through here, so I'm going to go into my shoot folders and I'm going to create a new folder. Okay, and that new folder is simply going to be called Michelle Dries. Okay, so I'm calling the folder Michelle Dries and inside Michelle Dries is where I'll be putting this particular shoot. So I'll go create, and at the top here, I can highlight that. It says, choose the location for the new session. So as you can see, we've created a new folder, and that's where we're gonna locate it. And we go, choose. So you can see along here that it's very clear where everything is okay in terms of the location now the the next thing is we've got another option and it says type okay now this is pertaining to whether it's a tethered or untethered session now 
I always, and it comes up by default, I always have this selected to a tethered session. And the reason for that is it gives me one extra folder. If you have a look, if we choose untethered, we only get three subfolders. But when we're in tethered, we actually get an extra subfolder for captures and a few other bits and pieces. We make sure open a new window is selected and then we hit OK. So here we are with the session. The next thing to do is to start importing some of the raw files. So let's do that. Take your memory card. So this is our import images. This is basically showing us everything that we've got on our memory card. So you can see there's 22 images and importing from phase one, include any subfolders. I just leave that ticked and store files. So, so import to store files, capture one folder. So that's absolutely fine. Here's the interesting bit. I'm going to create a subfolder using uh, a new name that I create. Now, why would you want to create a subfolder? Well, the way it works is you've got your, your capture folder and then inside your capture folder, you have your subfolders. So for us, if we were doing a shoot and we were doing, let's say something for a shoe company or something like that, we might have a folder that has leather shoes and then another one with suede shoes and then another one with um, ladies pumps or, or, you know, however we wanted to sort of categorize it. So we then have our capture folder and then inside the capture folder, we'd have a number of other folders that would contain a variety of captures pertaining to whatever it was that we shot. And this is just a, a neater way to do things. And it also reduces the actual overhead on your machine because you're only looking at a certain amount of images at any particular time. So we will call this subfolder Michelle and Junior. So we're creating a subfolder and we're calling it Michelle and Junior. And the reason we're calling it Michelle and Junior is because we've got shots here of Michelle Dries actually drumming. And then we've also got uh, her, um, her, her partner in this particular project, a guy called Junior, who's an amazing tap dancer. So we're gonna call it Michelle and Junior. And we're gonna use exactly the same name for the image files. But before we start doing the import, we've got another option here, and that's to create a backup, which I just, I love the sound of backup. You know, there's no such thing as too many copies of your images. So what we will now do is we'll take a hard drive and a cable, and we're gonna plug this in. And this, for this particular demonstration, will become our backup drive. Now, what's the point of doing that? Well, what that means is once you've imported that card for the first time, that the data will be written onto your computer hard drive and also onto your backup drive. So that means that once the card is imported, you've got the data in three places. And if you're as anal as I am, that's bliss. Okay, so let's do that now. Okay, now, as I've clicked backup enabled, it's start, started to bring up the location possibility, which if it's not enabled, then it doesn't happen. So we click that, and now what we wanna do is we wanna select a folder. Okay, so let's now create a backup folder. So we've got a place. Now, just a little word of note or warning, okay? All this backup drive does is keep a copy of the capture, it doesn't keep anything else so all it does is it's keeping a copy of whatever you had on your card um, it just it has that okay so that's what it does it doesn't back up the whole session it's just the captures which let's face it that's the most valuable bit in the whole thing and then we open that the next dialogue we've got is naming we always name our images um, so that they are relevant to our subjects, the shoot, the, the theme, whatever it happens to be. Um, so if you were doing, let's say you had to photograph a, a board of directors for a corporate shoot, then the individual shots would be named with the name of the subject, the person that you've 
photographed. Now, in this case, this is Michelle and Junior together, so we're going to call these shots Michelle and Junior. Now, also in the naming, we've got an option in terms of how we format that naming. Now, typically, the way I do it is I have the job name, which we've just written in through here, and then I also have um, a counter. Okay, so that's normally how we do it, but you can customize it any way you want with the date or however you want to do it, but this is how we do it, and let me show you how we customize it in Capture One. So let's customize our naming format. So we're going to go with job name. We drag that up into there, and we're going to have an image counter as well, or one or a digit counter, and I will go with a four digit counter, uh, which is just what we normally use. And okay. And then you can see at the bottom here, we've got an example of what the file names will look like. Now there's a few other options. You've got met metadata and copyright. Why don't we stick in copyright here? Always a good thing to do. And then you've also got the option to have some adjustments so you can attach any styles you want as you import the images. That's not the case here. And also you've got file info. Now, interestingly, there's nothing highlighted in file info at the moment. That's because we need to click on an image to get that file info. Okay, and you can see there's a pretty big files because they've been shot on an IQ 180. So just come down to the bottom, it says import collection, open collection when import starts. That's fine, we just leave that. We always have the eject card ticked. We never have erase images after copying. In fact, I'd quite like Capture One to remove that altogether. So why wouldn't you erase images after copying or, or downloading or ingesting? Well, the thing is, what if there's a mistake or a problem on your computer or something like that? It just, it makes me very, very uncomfortable. Normally for us, when we're importing the images, we just download everything off the card. This is just how we do it. But you have got the option to choose one image, two images, three images from anywhere, or you can choose the whole lot. Now I chose those individual images by holding the command key. So let's import all 22 of those pictures. Now you can see over here, under my session favorites, we've got a folder with a love heart that says Michelle and Junior. So what it is is that session favorite is the subfolder of this particular part of the shoot actually inside the capture folder and if I hold the mouse for a few seconds over this it should give me a destination so I can now see exactly where that folder sits and it's all in the right place the other thing as well is we've got a little indication here of the progress taken there's a little sort of progress pie that's just going around as the images import so you've imported your images You've created a subfolder. The subfolder is named the way you want it. All of your captures are now named as you wanted them to be named. The question is, what's next? Well, what would sort of start to happen now is we'd start to do the next shot or we might even start editing. So very often my assistants, when they're downloading stuff, they'll have a very quick glance at things and just see which shots they think look kind of cool. So they might just very, very quickly and briefly give a few shots one star if they think that those shots look okay. So they might just go one star like that. Now, if you're not familiar with rating the shots, it's really easy in Capture One. If you've got an image highlighted and you really like the look of that image, if you press the number one key, you get one star rating, number two is two star ratings, three stars, and so on, up to five stars we normally edit with a number of passes. So the first edit, what we would call a technical edit, so focus, eyes open, eyes closed, it all flashes, fire, all that sort of stuff, um, we would rate those images with one star. So that's our first pass of editing. Here's our images in terms of one part of this particular shoot. They're all contained in one folder inside the capture folder. My card's ejected automatically through the software because I had that box ticked. So I can now pull it out of the card reader.
let's now import a, a different uh, series of images from the shoot. This is still the shoot that I did with Michelle Dries, okay? But now um, I'm pretty sure we've just got portraits of Michelle by herself, okay? So it's no longer junior in the images. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call the the subfolder. We're gonna create a subfolder inside the capture folder as we import the images. And we're gonna simply call that subfolder Michelle underscore portrait. So it's very obvious exactly what it is. And then the file names, we'll actually call those Michelle Dries. Okay, so let's do that now. Create subfolder using name. And as you can see before, we had Michelle and Junior, but now we're gonna simply call it Michelle Portrait because that describes the imagery. We've got the backup enabled. One of the really cool things about Capture One is that once you've set up your, your backup enabled um, dialogue in the import box, every time you import a card into that same session thereafter and you've got that drive attached, it will just automatically go there. And the job name, which will then become the names of the images is simply going to be, be Michelle Dries. And we're going to do import all. We've selected create subfolder using name. So what we've done is just that's so really, really clear inside our capture folder, we've got another folder and that's going to be simply called Michelle portrait. And then inside that, we're going to have all of our captures and they're just called Michelle Dries because that's the name of our subject. Okay. And you can see over here on the left, under session favorites, we now have another favorite, another folder, and it's Michelle Portrait. So that new subfolder has been created, and what will be happening is we're importing directly into there now. <laughs>